This video is sponsored by Onshape. Hey there, about a month ago, I landed a model rocket for the first time, which is great, really excited about that. And in this video, I thought I'd cover some of the other less published flights. The last flight for Scout F that I covered in detail was flight number three, and so let's move on to flight number four. In the transition between flights three and four, I removed the landing pad that the rocket was supposed to touch down on. The original goal was to use the pad for shock absorption so that the legs didn't bounce so much. The design we have on the vehicle is extremely lightweight, but it's pretty bouncy. In removing the landing pad, I knew I needed to solve that problem, and one of the solutions on my mind was a linear damper. A pretty regular comment on this channel is that I should be using RC car shock absorbers on the landing legs to deaden the impact. These absorbers work great for little remote control cars. They're very springy and they damp out motion quite well, but because they're springy, they spring back, and that's not really what we want to be doing with these legs. In contrast to a shock absorber, a linear damper dampens the motion but isn't focused that much on springing back. The goal is to just slow the velocity of that motion. In addition, a lot of the linear dampers I found have a much shorter travel range, which works well for the leg design that we have here. I picked up a few different types of these from McMaster, and I gave them a shot on the grass. The great thing about these dampers is that they don't spring back much, they just absorb a lot of that energy. I ended up using these tiny little dampers at the very tip of the leg. They don't have a whole lot of travel, but they do a really good job of damping out a lot of where that bounce comes from. They're not perfect, but if we wanted a perfect solution, we would probably need to redesign the legs entirely. We had a good clean ascent for flight four, but on landing ignition, the rocket began to roll a bunch and the legs didn't come out. Where are my legs? Why aren't the legs out? At first I thought the reaction wheel wasn't working. This is the device inside the rocket which controls the roll axis. But it turns out that roll forces were coming from the throttle arms. These ceramic paddles for the throttle control are reusable for a few flights, but after each firing with the motor, they get a little worn down. Specifically, as the impinging surface of the paddle enters the exhaust plume, if the paddle isn't flat, it creates roll torques that are too strong for the reaction wheel to counteract, and the rocket spins up. Roll isn't a huge problem on this vehicle. Roll rate is what the problem is. As the vehicle spins faster and faster, it's harder for those TVC servos to keep up with the motion of the vehicle. Regarding the legs not coming out, the command was sent to deploy them, and they almost came out. The nichrome wire I had used to cut the rubber band was just a little too long, and this meant it didn't get hot enough to cut all the way through the rubber band, and we plopped to the ground. So for flight five, I remilled out those ceramic throttle arms to get rid of any erosion that had been going on. In the code, I made the legs deploy at a slightly higher altitude, and and I shortened that nichrome wire so it would get more hot. On the super off chance that you haven't seen this video, there's a link in the description down below, but this is the first one that I have actually stuck the landing on where the vehicle ends the flight and is upright. As far as landings go, I would say this one is pretty rough, but also, you know, any landing you can walk away from. One thing I was particularly not happy with here is the slide on the way down to the ground. I still can't totally figure out what did it, but there's a bug in my simulation code somewhere. Something is a little broken in my simulation somewhere, and it means that we end up with a control system that acts much lazier than it needs to. Sometimes it's worth digging deep into this stuff and spending a long time to try to find exactly what the bug is, and sometimes you've been working on the same rocket for six months and you're ready to move on. In the spirit of that, I said screw it, I multiplied the control gains by by two, and I went out to the launch site to try again.
Flight 6 had another clean ascent, very little tilt during the coast phase, and excellent throttle control on the way down. With all of these landings, I target a touchdown altitude of about 0.5 meters. In my mind, it's a little bit better to have the rocket drop to the ground rather than get really close to the ground and potentially catch the rocket on a piece of dirt or something like that. It just feels a little safer. What's not so great here, though, is these legs. When I designed the rocket and allocated the mass budget, I didn't include enough for the legs because I thought we'd just use that bounce reduction from the landing pad. But even with the small dampers at the end of the leg, there's still too much bounce. Or it's not really bounce, it's the touchdown attitude. A big part of the issue here is that when the rocket touches down on the ground, it's not touching down with all four legs at once. All four legs is not a problem, and if you have, you know, some amount of bounce reduction, you're gonna be okay. It's if you touch down at an angle, you then create a really large moment on the rocket by hitting that one leg with however fast you're going down, and it's difficult for those other legs to recover unless you have a very wide base. I want to be clear here that all of these things are very solvable problems, and they're solvable without a whole lot of work. But as one dude who has a bunch of different projects going on, I'd rather put that effort into a much larger version of this lander. This is something I mentioned a few months ago where I thought it would be a lot easier if this vehicle were like two or three times the size. I think it'd be really fun in like a year or so to build Big Scout or something that's much larger than what's behind me here. That type of mass budget allows for high powered rocket motors, it allows for much higher flights, you know, fancy, fancy leg dampers like this. We can do all sorts of fun stuff on that. But I didn't want to spend too much time trying to solve an inherent dynamics problem with a one kilogram rocket. These things, a lot of these issues end up solving themselves when the vehicle gets larger. With that said, I wasn't all out of rocket motors after flight six. So I figured let's load it up and go for one more for flight seven. One. Oh man. Flight 7 is about the same story as Flight 6. Fantastic control up and down, fairly good throttling with a little bit of a hard landing and tipping because one leg touches down first. Actually, if you look close here, you can also see that one of the legs takes a second to fold out too. I'm pretty sure it just caught on the rubber band that releases it, but it's hard to tell. And either way, it's just more leg problems. <laughs> Until Scout F, I haven't had enough good throttle control that I could really narrow in on what the other issues were with landing. Until you can get to the ground really reliably each time, it's hard to know that your legs are really the issue. So for whatever I build next that needs to land like this, we're gonna give the legs a lot more time in the design phase. For now though, I'm gonna let Scout rest and we're gonna focus on some more exciting projects like this thing right behind me. How to, can't get the, there, that, that thing right there. Uh, this is a nine foot tall, not now, but when it's stacked, it'll be a nine foot tall Starship Super Heavy model. We're gonna launch it, we're gonna do stage separation, we're gonna try to do a belly flop. Maybe we'll do the landing, we'll see. But Scout F has accomplished what it needed to. Out of seven flights, even though only one of them successfully landed upright, every single one of these flights recovered with basically minimal or no damage at all. I don't know that you can count those numbers as a total success, but I'm very happy with how it went, so that's all that counts. If you want to build something like this, I have put all of the CAD files, the step files, for actually building these parts uh, up on the BPS Patreon, and you're welcome to check that out. It's in the description down below. And before I sign off here, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video, Onshape. If you've been following this channel for a bit, you already know that I'm a big fan of Onshape. And if you don't know what Onshape is, it's a cloud-native CAD and PDM platform built for businesses. Onshape was actually created by the founders of SolidWorks, who saw that large engineering teams needed better solutions for their CAD tools. The platform is fairly new in the CAD world, and it keeps getting newer. That's because the team at Onshape pushes out new feature releases every three weeks. Recently, they added PCB Studio, which connects eCAD and MCAD designs. I don't know about you, you, but having fully modeled circuit boards in my CAD gives me that warm, fuzzy feeling. With Onshape's recent acquisition of cloud milling, CAM processing is coming to the Onshape platform in early 2023. This is a big deal for me personally. I mill a lot of the parts for my rockets and that needs a CAM processor. So having an integrated CAM processor in your CAD software is a really big level up. From excellent GitHub-inspired data management to a constant stream of new features in a snappy interface, Onshape is one of my favorite CAD platforms. I recommend that you try out Onshape for yourself or for your business, and you can do that for free by clicking the link on screen here or in the description down below. Thanks again to Onshape for sponsoring today's video. The next thing on this channel is going to be the Scout F engineering cut, which is one hour, two hours long. I don't know yet, I haven't made it, but these are really fun videos to make because I basically sit down and talk through how I made this 
this whole rocket in as much detail as possible. And it's great because I don't have to like perform well for the algorithm or anything. It's just documentation. So if you want to see that, make sure you're subscribed or do whatever you're going to do to make YouTube show you the video. Uh, anyway, thank you for watching. My name is Joe Barnard. May your skies be blue and your winds be low.